All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to County Executive Pittman's virtual press conference. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Jeff Amaris, and I'm the County Executive's new communications director. I'll be moderating this morning's press conference, and I'm going to put my contact information in the chat here in case you've got follow ups after the presser. Uh, so, for this morning, the County Executive and Dr. Ke Dr. Kellyanne Rahman will share updates on the county's COVID uh, response efforts, and the County Executive is also going to share an announcement on the county's climate change work. We're going to take questions after uh, the county exec and Dr. Kalyana Rahman have spoken. Uh, as a reminder, please put your name and media affiliation in the chat. Uh, and I'll call on folks for questions in the order that they appear in the chat. Uh, thank you. And with that, we'll get started with the county executive. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, let's start out with COVID. Our, our case rates are fortunately doing exactly what the models predicted. We talked in the last couple of weeks about the expectation that we'd see a drop about now and uh, seeing our case rate below 19 after it got up to around 23 in this latest mini mini surge um, was, was very good news. Only 69 new cases yesterday. We expect that to continue. And um, as a result of that, um, we are removing the social gathering limits that we still had in place. If you remember, these are for gatherings um, that have no um, organization or business that's that's managing them. Um, and so we're removing that, uh, but we're expecting and recommending that people continue to um, um, mask, social distance, and, and of course get vaccinated so that they can have um, more people gathering together, both indoors and outdoors. Um, we're also ending the third party delivery for restaurants charge limit. You remember we uh, with executive order, um, put a maximum of 15% um, for the third party delivery services that we're delivering food from restaurants. Um, we're removing that because the restaurants are able to operate now. Um, but we had some good news on that front. Our team met with DoorDash earlier in the week, and they've decided to implement a 15% um, permanent, at least for now, uh, rate for their tier one service, which is the, the basic service that we were, were regulating. Um, we have 5,400 doses to the county this week, uh, which isn't bad news. That's pretty good. But as of yesterday morning, still had 70% of the appointments at our county vaccination clinics still available. Um, compare that to the previous Monday, we were pretty much full. We only had 5% of our appointments still open. So um, that is a cause for concern. Half of our adults are vaccinated. A lot of folks just became eligible recently and, and we've got some work to do. So it's the second half of our residents that we need to, um, we need to get vaccinated. So my, my view on this is that this right now is the moment. This is the moment that every adult has a choice to make. And we, we either end this pandemic or we allow it to continue. We either get vaccinated or we don't. And this is not just about personal protection. It's about each one of us taking a little bit of time to do something truly great to ending this pandemic rather than letting it drag on through potentially another fall and winter surge. So county government, the health department, all of our team is doing everything that we can to make it easy to get vaccinated. So we have free transportation to all of our sites, including the Navy Stadium mass vaccination site. We now have our libraries doing vaccination clinics. We have community vaccination clinics all over the county. And I encourage people to go to aacounty.org slash COVID vax to register. There's a full list of all of the clinics and the times that they're open. So it's really easy to get this done. And um, we're gonna continue to do everything that we can um, to make it happen. Uh, another great thing that we can do in our county and globally uh, is to slow climate change and plan for its impacts. So you heard that we introduced a bill last week to create the resilience authority of Annapolis and Anne Arundel County. And that's a very important step in planning for the work that we'll have to do to protect our residents from both the fiscal and the environmental impacts of climate change. But science has showed clearly that carbon emissions are the cause of this climate change. 
And there's a lot of evidence that the leaders of fossil fuel companies were aware of the damage their companies were doing for many years. And rather than shift to green technologies, they paid lobbyists and PR firms to cover up the truth. Uh, so it's my obligation as representative of the residents of this very vulnerable coastal land that we live on to not only plan for the financing of resilience infrastructure, but also to hold these companies accountable for their actions. And that's why our Office of Law recommended that we file a lawsuit uh, against uh, fossil fuel companies and why I agreed to do so. That lawsuit was filed, I believe, yesterday. We have our, our county attorney, Greg Swain, with us uh, who can answer some questions on that as well. And then finally, I just want to um, mention a couple of updates, uh, upcoming things. Uh, our budget will be submitted to the county council this Friday. Uh, the budget address that I will do, reviewing highlights of that is uh, Friday um, at 11 o'clock. You can view it uh, recorded um, on Facebook, Stuart Pittman, County Executive Stuart Pittman Facebook page or Rundle TV. Um, and um, you can expect to hear how we're getting back on track after the belt tightening of the COVID year um, while putting our county in a stronger fiscal position than we've ever been in the past. Um, and then finally, I'm looking forward to May 3rd next week when we open the first three of our senior centers that have been closed for so long, um, Pascal, uh, Pasadena, and Annapolis. And um, I will be up there at, at some of those welcoming folks back to our senior centers. So um, thank you. And uh, over to Dr. Kalyana Raman, I believe. Thank you, County Executive. Um, I will start with our... <coughs> With our COVID data, so we are seeing um, good signs all around. We're seeing our case rate go down, down to 18, um, 22 last week. Um, we're seeing our hospitalizations go down, and that's really the critical piece of this, down in the 50s from the 70s last week. Um, and we're also seeing our percent positivity come down, down to 6.4 percent from 6. Point, sorry, from 7.1 percent last week, um, while keeping the percent of the population tested roughly the same as last week. Um, and so those are all good signs. Um, and that's really what we were keyed in on the whole time. Um, when we turn to vaccinations, we got about 5,400 doses this week. Um, and concerningly, we're seeing really pretty steep drop off in terms of demand for this. So we have most of our, uh, most of not all of our uh, appointments are posted online. You just have to click the link and then you put your name in. So we've simplified that process. Um, last week, when we started the week, Monday morning, we had about 5% of our appointments were still open. This week, when we started the week yesterday, uh, we had about 72% of our appointments open. Um, that's concerning because only 55% of adults have had even one shot. Um, there's still 45% of adults left to go. Uh, and we really want the folks to, to get them. So we've been expanding access, as the county executive mentioned, not just churches and libraries, but we'll be working with businesses to bring vaccine clinics to where people are. Um, and this is really, you know, when we think about what can we do to end this pandemic, getting the shot is what we can do to end this pandemic. Um, even if we don't think that our own risk is as high, um, it is a way for all of us to move forward. And so that's really, uh, it's really an important point uh, that I want to, I want to stress for anybody who's um, either ambivalent or conflicted about this, I would encourage you to, to learn more and to get your shot. Um, part of that is that we want to get students, high school students uh, vaccinated. You can see on our website, um, clinics that are 16 for 16 and older or for 18 and older. When it says 16 and older, that means we have Pfizer vaccine available there. We encourage high school students and parents as well, get your students vaccinated, particularly as we're heading towards the end of the year and there's gatherings and celebrations. Um, it'd be really important to get that, get that at least that first shot in your arm. Um, we will be increasing access to our community vaccination sites as well. And we'll, we'll be providing more vaccines as needed for community vaccination sites. Johnson & Johnson, um, on Friday, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices came out with their recommendation that 
Um, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine can be restarted for all groups, um, but with a warning about the uh, small but significant risk of increase in a particular type of clot along with low platelets. Um, we have very few Johnson & Johnson doses and we were using them for targeted populations, homebound, um, homebound and other populations where it's hard to get the second shot. We will be changing our practice around that. We will be making the Johnson & Johnson shot available um, to, to people probably next week. We, like I said, we only have a few hundred doses. Um, so for those who are interested in that, they'll be able to get it. And then we'll be using the, the Moderna and Pfizer for others. The main challenge we have is that, um, and we've talked about this, that the vaccine handling because of the temperature requirements and how long it can stay out at room temperature makes it a little bit challenging to offer any vaccine at any time. We do have to know which vaccine we're going to give to somebody. So, um, so you will see that change come next week. And with that, I believe I'm going to turn it back over to Jeff. Je uh, Jeff, you. Before, you, before you jump in, <laughs> um, I missed two things that I wanted to, to announce. The first is um, very exciting, particularly if you're a golfer. The, uh, the long-awaited Preserve at Eisenhower, our amazing new golf course or new and improved golf course, um, will be open on May 1st. And the ribbon cutting is Friday this week uh, at 4.30. Um, and then I also just wanted to notice on these new library vaccination clinics, I think we're, we're breaking new ground by having our libraries hosting vaccination clinics. They're open today at Brooklyn Park Library um, from one to three. And I understand that if press wants to attend, um, they're welcome. Thank you. And with that, we'll open it for questions. Uh, Rob Lang, you're up first. All right, I've unmuted. You can all hear me, I hope. Good morning. Um, later today, the president and the CDC are going to announce revised guidelines for wearing masks outdoors. Uh, I'm curious, Dr. Kalaranaman, Mr. County Executive, what do you think of that? That makes sense. Um, we're waiting to hear the official word on that. But this is the point of getting vaccinated, is that it allows us to roll back the changes we had made to protect ourselves against the pandemic. So as more people get vaccinated, we expect the ability to pull back that mask mandate even further as we go into the summertime. And I listen to my health officer, so I agree. Okay, um, one other question regarding senior centers. Yesterday you made an announcement that only three would partially reopen. Uh, why only three, why not open more? Um, and I guess you're opening them at, uh, it's similar to Howard County and, and some of the other counties where it's at a limited capacity, it's not at full capacity. Yeah, I mean, if we have, if we have somebody here um, on that, they can speak up. But I would say that um, two days a week, the Tuesday and Thursday, we're doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, we're doing food distribution at them. And uh, we have some, I believe, are still doing childcare. So we're making a transition. It will be uh, that transition will be complete before long, but we're just starting. We're doing it gradually. Okay. Thank you very much. Next up, uh, Danielle Ohl. Hi, good morning. Um, County Executive, when are the uh, gathering restrictions being lifted? I believe the executive order is actually, Greg, I'll let Greg Swain answer that because he's working on the executive order right now. Yeah, hi, I'm Greg Swain. I'm the county attorney. Um, we have drafted the executive order to lift the restrictions as of five o'clock today. Okay, and that means that there are currently, or there will be uh, from five o'clock forward, no more restrict, like you can gather with as many people as you want inside and outside? That there's no, there would be no restriction on indoor or outdoor social gathering, correct? Okay, great, thank you. Other than the restrictions that are in place at the state level, but they're not specific to social. Correct. Okay, thank you. Next up, Maxine Stryker. Good morning. Um, for the county executive or the, the health officer, as we're starting to see the demand decrease for the vaccine, what efforts are, are being made to reach residents throughout the county who may be hesitant to get the vaccine? 
So we've got a few uh, few things that are going on. So of course we continue to work with community organizations to um, to both do informational sessions and then offer encouragement and support um, to get the vaccine. I mentioned our community vaccination clinics um, that we're expanding them. Um, obviously the libraries, as we just talked about, we're in churches and we'll be working with businesses to bring clinics to other, other types of settings in the community. Um, we also are targeting our messaging through digital advertisement and radio ads um, to get to populations, particularly younger populations that have um, both haven't had a chance yet because we just expanded eligibility, but also just haven't shown as much interest in it, in it yet. Uh, and we'll be having more information later this week about our Health Ambassador Project, which will fund community organizations to do the boots on the ground outreach um, to talk to people in areas that are uh, have lower vaccination rates and get them vaccinated. And that, that yeah. I would just add that the the advertising campaign is is a full blown effort. You know, we've contracted with an advertising firm. We showed one of their videos last week, and and um, um, that's going on as well. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, John Fernet. This is for uh, Dr. Kylie Narman. Uh, question: Have you seen a resistance or a fall off on people getting their second shots. I've heard there's a national thing going on where there's a huge percentage of people that are getting the first and their reasoning is that they feel more vaccinated, which I'm not quite sure I understand how somebody can feel more vaccinated, but uh, have you found that there have been a lot of no-shows for second shots? So we haven't seen as much of the no-shows for second shots. I know that we are doing better than the uh, than the national average on the uh, on people coming back for that second shot, but we are tracking that. Okay, thank you. Next up, Chase Cook. Oops, sorry, I was muted. Yes, um, Ken Executive, just a quick question about the environmental lawsuit. Uh, is that a lawsuit? I see Mr. Greg Swain getting ready. Uh, I That lawsuit, is that something you guys are doing alongside kind of how the city did it with that private firm? Or is this a personal lawsuit from the county? I'll answer that. Uh, we are using the same law firm that represents the city of Annapolis in their case. So it is, um, it is being handled by Cher Edling, which is a, a law firm out of San Francisco. And we've been in talks with them for the last few months about going forward with the case. So the, the complaints are similar. Thank you, sir. All right, not seeing any other questions in the chat. Uh, last call, any last questions from folks? All right, thank you very much, everyone, and have a happy Tuesday.